Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Who's Who at Winnie Lark. My name is Jessica Hollister. Today, we are joined by Mandy Shep. Thank you for joining us today, Mandy. Hi. Um, it's lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Um, and I wonder, if, would you mind introducing yourself, stating your pronouns, and then telling us your job title, please? Certainly. Uh, my name is Mandy Shep. I use she, they pronouns, and I am the coordinator of Special Collections and Archives at SUNY Fredonia. Wonderful. Thank you. And uh, would you be able to tell us a little bit more about what you do there at Fredonia? Certainly. Uh, so I basically am um, in charge of the daily operations of the Special Collections Library, the archives. Uh, we are a small staff. It is me and a clerk. Uh, she is excellent and does all sorts of uh, wonderful projects and really uh, helps me to kind of bring the archives to life in a different way. Uh, because I'm library faculty, there are also classes that I co-teach. I host students. I work with them on their projects and uh, master's projects and capstones. Uh, and I also host interns. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for telling that uh, us about that. And uh, are any of those reasons uh, reasons that drew you into a career in librarianship or what drew you to this career? Uh, so there is, um, the, there is the honest answer, which I won't get into. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the kernel truth of it is um, I really like learning. Uh, like in a way that it is um, it's so, somewhat addictive. Like I, I just love learning everything that I possibly can about the world around me um, and engaging with others that are also on that similar quest of learning things or understanding parts of history or understanding parts of themselves. Uh, and librarianship really offers me a chance to kind of um, be a part of that community. That's beautiful. I feel I feel very similarly. It's um, if you love to learn, this is a career where you feel like you can discover something, even if it's something small every single day. Oh, completely. And um, I'm a big fan of niche knowledge. So <laughs> any any weird, highly specific details and stuff, I'm like, yeah, I am all about that. <laughs> Wonderful. And I wonder if you don't mind, I'll ask a quick question about the collections at SUNY Fredonia. Um, is it mostly SUNY Fredonia history and records there? Or do you have some local history collections or any unique collections there that you'd like to talk about? So one of the things I've done uh, since I started there, um, when I was first hired at Fredonia, the collections were basically labeled number one through 80 something. Yeah, um, wow. Which doesn't really help give you an idea of what the collections pertain to or what's what. And I would have faculty like, give me all your local history collections. And okay, I don't <laughs> know, maybe you need 43 and 72. Uh, so it was much easier to uh, facet everything kind of by subject. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we have local and regional history collections which deal with uh, Western New York history, Chautauqua County history, mm -hmm. and Fredonia Village history. Uh, and then we also have our university collections and records which are uh, records from the university that get transferred to archives uh, as well as faculty collections, alumni collections, and collections that deal with the university's history from its starting days as the Fredonia Academy in the 1830s. Uh, so it's a pretty good retrospective of that. Um, we also have several digital collections. Our special collections are kind of um, niched out by subject. Uh, so there are um, local Western New York history books. There are Fredonia books. There are um, uh, the Holland Land Company related books, because that's one of the library's big digital collections is Holland Land Company archives. Um, and then we have our signature collections, which are like our big fancy collections that we are known for. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Sigurd Rasher papers and the Stefan Schweig collection. Are wonderful. It sounds like a great balance of institutional records, but also maybe local history or local interest manuscript collections. It sounds really fascinating. 
Oh yeah, there's um there's interesting stuff and uh, a lot of maps. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we love a good map here. <laughs> um, and then I wonder, um, would you be able to tell us something that your colleagues would be surprised to learn about you? <laughs> so um, when you uh, b before I started at Fredonia, I was uh, the library director at Lilydale, um, which is a lot of rare books, highly specialized collections. So I really got into the world of um, like rare books, book repair preservationist stuff. And a weird little side journey off of that is uh, the world of forgery. Uh, I find forgery is absolutely fascinating. I think that they're interesting. Um, if someone is skilled enough to be, you know, to create a knockoff of a Dutch master painting, I find it's, but they can't make it in the art world because they're not like, talented. it's so fascinating to me. Um, and I also find the idea of um, purposefully messing with like provenance and stuff to be fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, so much so that I, I own a forgery. Wow. Uh, so this is one of the, um, oh, I did not plan for reflection, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so that is one of the uh, Andy Warhol bits from the Museum of Forgery and Mischief Art Collective. Oh my gosh. Uh, so what they did was they took Andy Warhol's drawing fairies, um, which is what that is a replica of. Uh, they loaded it basically into like a 3D graphic arm, uh, like a 3D printer with a pencil instead of a filament spool. Mm -hmm. uh, so it produced 999 exact copies of that drawing. They aged and did all of the um, distressing to the paper. So every rip is identical, every fold, every tear. It's perfect. Uh, there is no way to distinguish these uh, artificial copies from the original. Oh my gosh. Uh, all of the provenance reflects that. So there is like a one in a thousand chance that it's the real one, uh, but it's fascinating. Uh, the whole process was just absolutely intriguing to me and I could not resist owning a piece of that. That is, that is truly fascinating. <laughs> and I wonder, is it, are you interested in forgeries uh, particularly for works of art? Are you also interested in document forgeries? Or I'm sure you've seen all different types of forgeries at this point. So I find it interesting because um, the minute something becomes culturally intriguing mm -hmm. is the minute that that door opens. Mm. Uh, my, my latest rabbit hole was on bourbon forgery. Oh, wow. Uh, like the Pappy Van Winkle bourbon that is super exclusive and very hard to get. There's like a multi-year waiting list to get a bottle. Uh, people are purchasing empty bottles and filling it with like well whiskey. Uh, but the way that they're detecting it is down to like, what type of glass is the bottle made from? What's the text on the label? Uh, what type of cork is in the bottle? And it's so highly specific the way that they can detect what is uh, true and what is not. And it's fascinating the amount of work that someone puts into making a knockoff yeah that's incredible and I uh, I imagine do you uh, do you think that because you are an information scientist and that true and factual information is important to our career is that part of your interest in forgeries is that is there a tie there oh absolutely um it is it's that and the um the, the fine line of belief that, that separates reality from fiction. Mm. And it's, oh, oh. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Mandy. Oh, no problem. Uh, I'm, I'm proud to show it off. It's, uh, it's a fascinating experiment. And I feel like um, just anyone that works with archives or rare books or special collections where you see the amount of care and detail and precision that needs to go into repairing and restoring these materials mm -hmm. um and to just see that kind of turned on its head and used for for evil uh, <laughs> is is uh it's so interesting like you could do so much more with that talent and this is what you chose hmm. <laughs> yeah that's 
it's it is it's like using the power of information like you said a little bit for evil like turning it turning it around and using it for its its darker purposes there yeah Oh, thank you again. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and actually, that concludes um, our interview for today. This has been Who's Who at Winnie Lark. Thank you so much for joining us, Mandy. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Okay. Bye. Members of Winnie Lark are able to utilize a number of programs and services, including archival and digital services, Ask Us 24 7 chat reference, Ask the Lawyer, Empire Library Delivery. Hospital Library Services, InfoPass, and a professional development. Please visit www.wnylrc.org to learn more.